Is there someone that you love dearly that is hurting you? And is there someone that loves you dearly and you're hurting them? I'm going to answer both those questions for you. Those are too easy. The answer is yes. All right, where there where there is love, there is also pain. We're human. Those are easier questions to answer if you're going to be honest. If you love someone, you're also hurting them. Here's a more difficult question to answer. I don't have the answer to this one. Not entirely, I don't think. I'd love to have the answer. The person that you're hurting, the person that you love, are you hurting them because you're not allowing them to change? And the person that that you that loves you and that is hurt by you or that's hurting you, I'm getting these kind of confused. Are they hurting you because they're not allowing you to change? And to what extent, to what extent is that really happening because they're preventing you to change or you are preventing them to change? I mean, is it a prison that we're creating ourselves? I mean, how much of it is that? How much of it, yeah, look, I'm in this prison in here, look at this. That was actually pretty damn symbolically accidental. Pretty cool. I just walked into a hut that somebody built in the woods here. Don't know who the heck built it, but it's kind of like a little prison, I guess. Go sit over here. It's a cool little piece of wood. Looks like a chair. Interesting. Can't really see it, but. How much of the prison is created by ourselves when we're not allowed to change? I just learned, not for the first time, but a little bit more so through a recent conversation that I'm preventing somebody from being able to change and being able to be who they want to be. And I'm scared as hell of that being true. I don't want to cause that pain. I don't need to go into the, the details of what it is that I may or may not be preventing someone from doing or even identify this person because it's that's not the point. And, the point is to grow and not hurt each other purposefully. It's all focus on me here. There are some things that I want to do in life that I know I'm capable of doing if I just allow myself to and grow into doing it. But I constantly compare whether my actions are going to be helpful to just me or am I going to help others with it and sometimes oftentimes I start fearing that I'm going to hurt somebody by me trying to change me trying to do more in my life and that's not the point if I were to change and become all of who I want to be I can only imagine that I would be helping those I love dearly so much more because of it. But I, I don't, I don't feel that that's always true. And so I sometimes start thinking that I really shouldn't do the things that I want to become and change into because it might hurt people I care about. And so there's some mental games going on here, I do. When I love someone, 
and I allow them to imprison me. Is that universal? Is that why maybe this other person also feels like I'm preventing them from changing and becoming the person that they want to be? Because of the fear that we have as human beings of disappointing others or hurting others by trying to change ourselves? How much of it is a bona fide, fair thing that we should be careful of not changing into? How much of the fear of change and becoming who we want to be is, is a fair thing to consider when changing? And how much of it is just just fear? I don't know. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm an employee. I'm a son. I'm a friend. I'm an asshole. Yeah, I got many labels. Which one do I like wearing most? Probably not the asshole. I like being an inspiration. So, if I'm going to inspire, I need to be willing to walk the walk and deal with the things that scare the heck out of me. the same time, balance is always the trick, it seems. How do I achieve what I want to achieve in life and enable others to feel safe in doing the same thing? Not the same things as me, but the same as in pursuing what they want to do in life. While somehow maintaining unity. In the world that we live in, it seems, at least on the west side of the world, it seems like everything is about do it yourself, you deserve this excursion, you deserve this little exploit, you deserve this little XYZ vice, take care of yourself, you deserve, spend, 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 consume, consume, consume. And so this idea of unity seems to fly in the face of improving yourself because on the west coast, it seems, Improving yourself is synonymous with consumption and being selfish. But what if improving yourself meant becoming a better person for everyone around you, including you, but because you were becoming a better person for you first? What if that's what that really meant? I think that's why I personally struggle so much with this idea of improving myself. It's because... And not to blame it entirely, because I need to hold myself accountable to my own little demons, but where I live, at least here in the United States, it just seems like improving yourself really is about being selfish. The media tells us this, the movies tell us this, the pornography tells us this, even church sometimes tells us this, maybe not spelled out maybe it's innocuous at first subliminal yeah you can watch that Netflix thing you know I know it's a little scandalous I know it may even have the name scandal in the title but it's okay indulge you're not the one that's screwing over that poor little dude in the office there in that movie you're not the one that's cheating on the husband or the wife you're just getting to live through it nice and vicariously. As long as you don't do it, it's okay. Indulge. Be selfish. But hey, you've watched enough of those Netflix things, and now it's time to graduate. You're not getting the love you need at home, so maybe just a little bit on the side. Maybe just text somebody. Hey, it's okay. You're just going for coffee. You're just meeting them for dinner. You're just going and fixing something that's broken at their house because you're a nice person. You just want to help somebody else, so, you know, it's okay. You're just walking into their room with them to watch TV. You're pulling the covers over yourselves, but you're not going to do anything. You'll be home in time for dinner or breakfast the next morning. 
Yeah, I kind of took that to an extreme, didn't I? I, I'm not saying that that's who I am. It isn't me who I described. After drugs, that definitely has not been me. Nor can I say that I ever did anything to disavow the vows I made when I, I became married, man. But when I was on the drugs, a little over seven years ago, it was a little easier to give in to these little things in life that entice you away from your commitments, whatever your commitment may be. Commitments in this country seem to be only as good as they're good for you. The moment a commitment goes sour, we discard things here. We discard everything here. But here's where I live now, so who knows? Maybe this is a global phenomenon at this point. I've traveled a lot as a kid. I don't recall this being this way before, but it's been many decades since I've traveled overseas. But unity here in America seems to be based on what you can get out of it. The moment things become difficult, it's time to move on, make another commitment, and expect that to be any more different than the one you made before that didn't work. I think I've gone off the handle quite a bit. I honestly can't even remember where I started and I first put this camera up. All I know is that I want my family to be healthy. I want them to achieve everything that they've ever wanted to in their lives. And so do I about my own self. And that's difficult to achieve. Especially with the many messages that inundate ourselves. Saying the exact opposite is what you should do. I have no moral today. I'm just in a bit of a prison at the moment. A prison of my own doing, a prison of the doing of others. I intend to break free from that prison. I still make strides towards it, but it's two steps forward, three steps back some days. So what's imprisoning you? What's imprisoning me is my fear, always, of hurting somebody, of disappointing somebody, of having somebody abandon me. <laughs> yeah, I got abandonment issues. So what? Not so what. Let me not be callous about it. They're real. You know, I don't need to be all nonchalant. They're real. I'm afraid of being abandoned. But how much of that am I creating myself? At what point do you stop being the little kid and hold yourself accountable, regardless of the many hurts you've experienced throughout your lifetime with fellow human beings? I'm shaking because it's cold. If you're still watching, you're a champ. But I'm going to sign off now. I'm going to walk outside of this little physical prison for the moment and enjoy the mental one I still have to break through. I'm wishing you the best in that regard, and I hope that you can do it too. See you maybe soon. Peace.